I'm Dan and welcome back to Adventures in Guitar Land where I teach you how to play guitar by playing a role playing game. Today we're going to cover some of the notes on this guitar. Before we do, click that like, subscribe, and bell icon so you're notified whenever I come out with new content. Also, leave a comment below. Do you think it's important to learn the notes on here? If not, tell me why. So, without further ado, let's get into understanding the notes on this guitar. And in order to do, to play, you really need to understand what the notes are. Um, this is going to build, this is part of that building block foundation that takes you from a true beginner up through intermediate and on into advanced playing. In order to get there, you have to know the basics. Now we've already went over some of the chords and some bar chords and stuff, but I don't think I really covered the notes. So we're gonna do that today. To start off, we're gonna learn the notes on that low E string, your sixth string. And since it is an E string, keep in mind that everything we learn there can also be applied to your first string, your high E string, because they're the same. So if you go back, I'm gonna turn off the humbucker and turn down my volume. If you go back and you look at some of the other videos, you'll notice that, especially on like the power chords one where I taught you 48 chords in 10 minutes, um, I talked about moving around to different positions and different notes as the root. And in order to understand a chord, you gotta know the root note, the third, the fifth, all that theory stuff that we're really not going to cover in this video because we're going back to basics and learning what are the notes on here. So first thing you got to remember is the tuning of your guitar. So we're going to go from the sixth string up to the first. You have E, A, D, G, B, and E. So all of those are in fourths except for that B string. It's a third from that G. So that get, makes things get a little funky, but bear with me, you're gonna make it through. Again, today we're gonna learn two strings, the low E and your A string. Now, like I said, anything you apply to that low E is also gonna apply to that high E because they're both E. So the way notes work is the same. So in order to start learning this, we're gonna start out with just a minor bit of music theory, just a little bit, not a lot. So to understand what I'm talking about on this guitar, you have to understand that there are seven notes basically, and then you can add accidentals to get the full range of 12 notes that we use in Western music. Those notes are A, B, C, D, E, F, and yes, G. Now why that's important is to understand a couple things about those notes. So there are two spots where there's no whole tone, in between notes. So between A and B, which is fifth, uh, A is your open on your fifth, B is your second fret on your fifth string, there's a whole note. It's two semitones separated. So it's a whole step, not a whole note. It's a whole step. However, from B to C, you only go up one fret. It's a half step. So there are two instances where you have that half step interval in basically the C major scale, or from A to G without any accidentals, i.e. no sharps, no flats, or anything like that. That is between B and C, and between E and F. So if you remember those two things, at least going up a string, you will know that as long as you're not going from E to F or B to C, everything is gonna be two frets, i.e. you're gonna skip a fret before you finger the next one. So let's look at this. If you're going all the way up, and we're just gonna go up to the 12th fret, because that 12th fret, if you remember, is the octave. So this is an E. That is also an E, just like this is an A on the fifth string, 12th on the fifth string, also an A. So we're just gonna cover from here to here because once you get past that, everything up here just repeats. It's the same thing. That's one of the wonderfully easy things about guitar and music is that when you jump up an octave, it just kind of repeats. So let's look at the notes on the sixth string. You have E, and like I said, you go to F, it's a half step. So you go to that first fret. There's your F. Now it's a whole step up to G, so you skip the second fret, go up to the third. There's your G. So you have one, two, three. Now, where I said the guitar, for the most part, with the exception of that pesky B string, is tuned in fourth. So that's because the next note from G is an A, because it's cyclical. It does circle, it's a big circle. So you would skip, because it's a whole step, and there is A. That would be the fourth. But a is also the next string. Put that aside for now. Let's just concentrate on here. So you got G to A. Now you're going up to B. That's another whole step, not a half step. So you skip the sixth fret, go up to the seventh. There's your B. 
Now you're going from B to C, that's your half step. So don't skip the eighth fret, hit it. Very good, there's your C. Now going to E, it's a whole step. So you skip the ninth fret, go up to the 10th. There's your D. Then it's another whole step back to E. So what you have, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. That's all the notes on your sixth string, that low E string. Now let's go back. We know that this is an A, but we also know that the next string is an A, right? So there's your A open, A to B, like we already covered. You skip that, because that's your half step. So you skip it, go up to the second fret, there's your B. B to C, you're only going one fret, because it's a half step, there's your C. Then you go a whole step, so you're skipping the fourth, going up to the fifth, there's your D. Also, side note, that's the next string. So there's your D. So now you can keep going. You know, you know from D to E is a whole step. There's our E. We know that E to F is a half step. There's F. We know that from F to G is a whole step. There's our G on the 10th fret. And then it's another whole step up to that 12th fret on the A. So what you have is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. And that's your notes on the first two strings. And by the way, just keep in mind that high E string, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, is just like the low E string. So you've now learned the notes on half of the strings on your guitar. Now we only got to cover in a later episode these last three. But that's going to be a little farther down the line because for what we're doing in the future, you've really got to know the notes on these first two, or the sixth and the fifth string, that E and the A string. And why that is so important is that's where you're building chords, and that's how you know what scale position to play on. So if you remember back to the bar chord thing, I said that I taught you 48 chords in 10 minutes. Technically I did, but you have to know where to play them. So if I said play an A minor, yeah, you would you might know, okay, A minor, that was one of the open chords. But if I say play an A minor bar chord, well, you can't do that in an open position. You have to know where A is, specifically that root A, that low A. If you know that it's right there on the fifth string, or on the sixth string, I should say, then you know that in A minor, remember you, you got to flat that third, it's like that. There's your A minor A bar chord. If I want to play a B minor bar chord, well, I could play that here, or I could play that here. And understanding where to play those bar chords is going to really help you. All right, so how, do you, how are you going to practice this to get it into your mind? Well, that's very simple. So the first thing you're going to do is just run through them and practice playing them, going E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. You're going to go through and play it while you say it as to, re to reinforce your memory and learning. Now, if you want to do this in a truly adventure guitar land way, here's how you're going to do it. Bust out your dice. So you can apply this type of method to just about anything. Um, dice are a wonderful tool to randomize things. Now these are my role-playing dice. Hey, you know, I'm a geek, it is what it is. I'm not gonna use anything crazy in here. What I will use is I'll say, okay, I need something that has, well, there's seven notes, but eight if you include the octave. So I need something that has eight. Well, there's a D8 right here, awesome. Then I need something that can split between the A and the E string, but I don't have a two-sided die, but what I do have is a four-sided die, or really anything that has odds and even numbers. For sake of this, we're gonna use a six-sided die because everybody has these typically, even if they're the ones with just the dots. So what I'm gonna say is the odd numbers on here is my fifth string, and the even numbers is my sixth string. So what am I gonna do with these? Well, I'm going to take them and I'm gonna roll them. Okay, so what I came up with was a three and a five, okay? So that three, since it's odd, tells me that I'm learning something here on my A string. The five means it's gonna be the fifth note up on that A string. 
So what is that? Well, now I gotta figure out what that is. So we have A is one, B is two, C is three, D is four, E. E is the fifth note on my E string. So let's do it one more time to let you kind of give you the idea. All right, so we have a three again here, which tells me it's on my fifth string, but I have an eight. So the eight is knowing what that eighth note is, which is really that octave right there. But if we wanted to count it out because we weren't sure, it would be A is one, B is two, C is the third, D is the fourth, D is the fifth, F is the sixth, G is the seventh. Oh, look at that, A is my eight. And that's one way that you can kind of randomize it and play it in there. Another way that you can practice this is just to practice with bar chords. And you can sit there and just go, okay, I want to play an A. Well, I can play an A here, I can play an A here. I want to play an F. Well, I can play an F here. I can also play an F right there. Because there's my F. So that would be my F power chord or bar chord. There are multiple ways to do this. Have fun with it. Try to think of different ways. You can even start to look and say, okay, how can I extend it across the two strings? And this is one that's really fun because then you can start on anywhere. You can start on that C or we'll start on B. So I'll say, okay, I only want to go up three, then I'm gonna switch to the next string. So we got B, I have C, and I have D. So where is the E on the next string? Well, it's right there. I have E, F, and G. Wow, look at that. B, C, D, E, F, G. F, E, D, C, D. You can play it. If you start on G, do the same thing. G. A, B, C, D, E. And just find different ways to kind of get this to ingrain into your mind. So that's it for today. Just wanted to get where those notes were on your strings so that the next video, you can start learning how to apply that in the writing chord progressions. All right, so until then, enjoy your adventure, and I'll see you in Guitarland.